This video introduces a rule for differentiating composite functions. So by now we've seen videos talking about differentiating polynomials, products of functions and quotients of functions, as well as some of the special functions like the exponential, logarithm and sine and cos functions. Now we need to move on to some more complicated things. Functions composed of other functions regularly appear in real applications. And we need to be able to differentiate them if we're going to look at their rates of change. The rule that we use to do this is called the chain rule. The chain rule says if we have a function f of x, which can be written as a function of another function, for example if we were to write it as y equal to y of v of x, some inner function, then the chain rule says the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y with respect to v multiplied by the derivative of that inner function v with respect to x. Now at first that might seem a little bit weird, especially the dy dv bit. Let's have a look at an example and see what that means. We're going to look at finding the derivatives of these two functions with respect to x. First of all we've got the fourth power of x cubed minus x and then 3 multiplied by e not to the x, but to x squared minus 4. As usual, the key here is finding out what is v or what is u or whatever it is that we need to make up our rule. In this case, we need to write y as a function of v of x. In the first example, where f of x is equal to x cubed minus x, all raised to the fourth power, this would be fine if we just had x to the fourth power, but we've actually got a function to the fourth power. So I'm going to let that function be v of x. So v of x is going to be equal to x cubed minus x. That then means that f of x, or y if you like, y or f of x, is equal to v to the fourth power. Then by the chain rule, we've got that dy dx, or f dashed of x, is equal to dy dv by dv dx. Now dy dv is pretty simply just 4 times v to the 3, and then dv dx is going to be 3x squared minus 1. The only thing we need to do then is rewrite this so that there's no v's left. We don't really want v's to be there in the end. They were just something that helped us in the process to get this derivative. So I'm going to replace the v's with x cubed minus x. So we end up with 4x cubed minus x to the third power, 3x squared minus 1. So our derivative in this case for f of x equals the fourth power of x cubed minus x to the 4 is 4 times x cubed minus x to the third times 3x squared minus 1. Now if you're looking closely at that you might think that kind of reminds you of something. Bringing the fourth power down and reducing the power by 3 leaving the inside bit alone. That's exactly what we've got here then we have to just append onto the end of it the derivative of that inside part. And that's exactly how this works. This is like a generalized power rule or index rule. In some textbooks, you'll even see it written in that way as a generalized power rule. And I'm just going to leave it as a specific example of my chain rule. Now let's look at b. b is f of x equal to 3e to the x squared minus 4. Now again, remember that if this was just 3e e to the x, everything would be fine and we'd just say the derivative is 3e e to the x. But that little x squared minus 4 in the index is kind of mucking us up. So what I'm going to do is let that be my v function. Let v be x squared minus 4. So f of x, or y, is equal to 3e e to the v. And then my chain rule says that f dashed of x or dy dx, whichever one you want to call it, is dy dv multiplied by dv dx. So we just need to know what those are. If y is 3e e to the v, my rules for the exponential function tell me that dy dv is 3e e to the v again. dv dx then is just differentiating x squared minus 4, which is just 2x. Again, we're going to clean this up and replace all of the v's with their form in terms of x. So we have 3 by 2 is 6, x e to the v becomes e to the x squared minus 4. So then we have a couple of examples of the chain rule, giving us the instantaneous rate of change of composite functions. So we now know heaps of this differentiation stuff. Polynomials, exponentials, logs and trig functions, products, quotients and functions of functions can all be differentiated. And we can mix all those rules together. 
What about what to do now? As usual, attempt the exercises to get lots of practice. Remember to keep adding things to your cheat sheet if you need to, just so that you can refer to those when you're doing exercises. Something else to try will be to use the chain rule to find some new general rules, again, which you can add to your cheat sheet, for things like a function raised to the nth power, we've seen an example of that, cosine of a function instead of just cos of x, sine of a function instead of sine of x, and e to a function and log of a function as well. So you can add those as general rules into your cheat sheets. But for now, that's it for the chain rule and composite functions.